All right, we are uh, here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the numbers for the clock face so you get your uh, hour numbers. So we're going to start out by drawing a r square that's five and a half by five and a half. So I've got everything here in AutoCAD. I'm going to go up to my draw rectangle tool, click on the arrow, um, and in this case, I have a choice. I could go from the and make my x0, y0 in the lower left hand corner. But in this case, because I know the center of this piece is going to have a, a hole drilled in it for the clock mechanism, I'm going to go with a square center full base. First thing is to specify center point. So I want the center point of this to be at 0, comma 0. So I'll hit 0, tab 0, and enter. And then the base, uh, so I'm going to be 5.5, tab over 5.5 to give me a 5.5 by 5.5 inch square. So there is my, uh, everything that I'm going to do now is going to be within this square so that I can get that taken care of. Now, my next step here is to go ahead and draw a circle and some lines to basically give me a point. These are going to be construction lines. So I'm going to start out right now. I'm going to create a new layer. So come up over here into your Layers Property Manager. We're going to click. We're going to Add. And I'm going to uh, just write Construction. So Because these are going to be some construction lines. I'm only using these uh, to give me an idea of where I need to place my numbers when I go. I'm going to make that color red. So, and I'm going to go ahead and click here to make that active. So, and we'll go ahead and hit apply and OK. Now, you want to make sure when we draw this that you have your construction layer uh, highlighted or uh, so this is where we will be uh, drawing right now with these construction this construction geometry that I'm going to use so we'll go ahead with a circle and in this case I want a circle di center diameter so come back first thing it asks you is for the center point so zero tab zero now next thing you need to do is actually specify the diameter now we have to stop and think about this for a moment uh, we've got five and a half inch by five and a half inch squared and we need to allow a half an inch on both sides for um, our uh, chamfer or a round over or whatever decorative edging or decorative beading we're going to put on the sides of this so we're going to subtract one inch that's a half an inch for both sides from that so we're at four and a half inches and then we want to add some spacing and allow a little spacing there for our letters as well. And um, in this case, we're going to add maybe another quarter of an inch. So our circle diameter here should be four and a quarter or 4.25 inch diameter. So, so now we're going to use this to set up all of our numbers. Our next line here, we're going to just draw a line. We're going to go from center, so again I can enter 0 tab 0 for that. And we're going to go right on over here uh, to that next point at 0. So if you want to extend it out, you can even extend it out. So And that's our line there. Now, we have 12... Uh, numbers on the clock face for each hour. 12 hours is a full uh, thing. So I'm going to click on this. This of course is the 3 o'clock position. But now I want to get 11 more lines kind of centered about that point. And we have this tool up here uh, called a polar or rectangular ray. If you just started out it would probably show a rectangular wet ray. So we want to go to the polar array tool. So we're going to click that and it wants to know the center point so again 0 tab 0 hit enter notice it automatically comes up it's given you and rotating it six times so if you think about it this is 0 degrees this is 60 degrees 120 180 and so on 
Uh, we have 12 places for the dial. So I'm just going to go right here where it says eight items and we'll switch that to 12. Notice it automatically populates to the angle. So at 30 degrees, I can sit here and I could say maybe I want that uh, 12 degrees to be only within 180. So I can change that to 180 and that puts it with there, which that wouldn't really be right. Uh, that's 16 degrees between each of those angles. So let's go ahead and switch that back to 360 degrees. So, and I've got all of that there. Now I just go over here and close out the array and I've got those positions. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to activate my object line layer. So now notice at this point I have my construction lines. I can turn those on or off. Uh, this is just my construction geometry. So, so activate my main layer and I'm going to go in now and I'm going to put numbers for all of these so I can set that. Now the best way to do that right here is through the annotate tool. So and I'm going to create what's called a multi-line text. So now when I click multi-line text the first thing it wants is to specify the first corner. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click right there at that intersection point. So if you need to, you might have to turn on your object snaps. So we're going to click that there and go up so, so that it puts that in there. Now that's got it up pretty high, so probably not where I want. So let's go ahead, we'll escape out of this, back up. Let's try it again. Uh, we're going to click right here, and I'm going to go uh, to about right maybe even just do that for right now so you're closer now notice you've got your different style screen and your formatting here uh, so as we're into our text editor now so first thing I want to do is I want to change my font and you pick out a font that you like I'm a Times New Roman person so uh, you just kind of tip type in times uh, and then you can come down pick Times New Roman and we need to specify the actual size. So I, I want to go 0.75 as far as my dimension here. And of course, we're going to type in the number 1. Now, you'll notice when I first did that, it kind of went back. So and changed it back to our height of that text is only a 200 thousandths of an inch. So not a big deal. Just kind of come back over, highlight that, and bring this in to your 0.75 and then hit enter and you got our place it so one inch so and you are good to go um, go ahead and left click to place that in there at that point so I'll hit the escape out I can kind of re-click on that number so get me back into there just hit escape if you need to I can also click on certain parts. So if you click on there, you can grab some of these different snaps, kind of move it around. Now watch your auto snaps here, so because it's going to kind of put you into different places as far as how you move and manipulate it around. So uh, it's going to be real easy to possibly pick up on your actual auto snap. So you want to watch that as you place it. So there's the first one. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing with number two. So we'll place this again. I want this to be 0.75. We're back to Times New Roman. So bring that back in. So 0.75 and this is number two. Enter. So and left click. Place that. You can, if you like where it's at, you can keep it there. Otherwise, you can click on it, kind of move it around. Once you highlighted it, you can kind of place it where you want. So, next one will be number three. So we'll, and notice here, I'm just using this construction line geometry to kind of help me place this where I want. So go up to Times New Roman. So bring that in. Make this 0.75 again. So that we got that and number three here. Okay, again it didn't 
quite do it so just go back highlight the number bring it down select your 750 and then left click to place it now in this case with the three I might want to kind of center that up all right we're gonna keep on doing this all the way around from one two three four five six and so on so right now I'm just gonna place them here just so you see this we'll come up here all right so here's another one Times New Roman so we'll get this placed so we're gonna go uh, six in this case go ahead and highlight that bring it back to 0.75 enter and right click now okay we're kind of a little too far there so we'll just grab it pick it side make sure you get it placed if you need it so next one here I'm gonna do the nine o'clock position going the other way so go ahead times New Roman again so we'll make this go nine highlight change that to 0.75 enter okay grab and move it to where you need it to be so that's good oh and then we'll go ahead and place 12 just so you get the idea so here I want that so we'll number 12 here so we want this to be times New Roman so and 0.75 Again, just click this, move it to where you need it to be. Now, I do want to point out, remember we said we're going to uh, basically have a half inch chamfer or a half inch round over something as decorative edge. So if these numbers are too close to that side, they're going to be cut out when you go to put your decorative edge. So make sure you move them in. So grab them. And kind of move them in. Let's get them kind of right there on that particular area. So that way they're not uh, where they need to be. If you double click and uh, open up where you get back into your text editor, just uh, hit escape and re grab it. So it's pretty common. So uh, grab hold. All right. And you'll keep going you'll fill out the other numbers and then you'll have your clock spaces there for you to be able to save it so now if I go back to my home tab go back into your active layer here let's go here and shut off the uh, turn off that layer for the construction geometry that we used and I'll give you an idea of what the numbers will look like uh, on the face there when we go to cut those out on the CNC router so if you have any questions, uh, come see me. I'll be glad to uh, talk you through it, show you a little bit more so that you can set up this geometry and get these numbers put in so you can cut it out. So thanks for watching.